Thank you so much for coming. Neo. oh my gosh, welcome to the podcast. I am so excited that you're here. I'm excited to be here. And let me just say, I really appreciate you being a man of your word. I have always known that to be really important, but especially in this business, I'm realizing, you know, the value of that and, and how that really is the foundation of building relationships. And a lot of people said that they would kind of help and here you are actually honoring your commitment. So I just wanted to say thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And I'm just, I'm excited for you. I came here uh, just to see that you came did this multiple camera setup. I mean, you're probably like a real professional <laughs> here. <laughs> it's, it's power and execution. So I, I just yeah. commend what you're doing and I'm just excited to see how far this podcast go and and sadly, I get to be one of your guests. So yeah, so I actually got a, ch a chance to meet you for the first time at Pinky Cole's American Sesh. Yep. Um, that was an amazing time. Amazing. How was the experience for you personally? Because you're so established and me just getting started, that was the first time I had actually shared publicly yeah. that I wanted to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. How was that experience for you as like a very established entrepreneur? I think it was an amazing experience. I learned a lot. Relationship building. Is it, it inspired me really. The, the biggest takeaway for me is I'm doing my own show. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm, I'm shooting the show now. Yeah, I saw that on YouTube. Yeah, a couple of shows. So one, my regular podcast, but I mean, I'm shooting a show like the sesh. Oh, really? Not, not like the sesh, but my own spin on my own theme of the show. So I've been writing multiple shows. So that was an inspiration to see it on my homie. Um, and me and Derek, we talk weekly. So to just see what they're doing, it was an inspiration that that was a thought she had. It. And then... She just had a dinner with Mark Burnett and Netflix and all of them. I'm like, wow, from a thought that was less than 90 days ago. Yeah. So the same thing when I see you that you said mentions your podcast and I thought it was already running. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Like I'm thinking it was out and you said, no, I went and did it after all of that. And that was under 60 to 90 days. Well, now you, you said you got 15 episodes already, which is like pow. So there's power in like a lot of people want to know the secret formula. Like everybody wants to know when the secret formula it is execution. It's nothing else. Like yeah. we try to figure out it's do what you say you're going to do or make an excuse. Like you, there's two things you could do. You could get results and make excuses. You can't do both sides with any discipline. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. And I think I also appreciate the amount of humility in the room that she created. And I know that was a very intentional from her perspective. She really wanted to make sure that there were no egos, right? Just everybody ready to build. Great job. How she did that. Yeah. And I was actually really surprised to see how many as aspiring entrepreneurs were there, like me who hadn't actually started my podcast yet. Also being able to provide some value to others who multi seven, eight figure entrepreneurs established in the industry. Um, and to see that at the end of the day, we're all still trying to build no matter at what level. And there was like some type of humility there. I thought was really interesting. So and it was a phenomenal job. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah. I love that. So I'm really excited to talk with you today just because I think that a lot of people, myself included, had, when I first met you, I think we were on, um, Clubhouse. Okay. Oh and and um, we were in a room with Corey, mm -hmm. and uh, it's funny. I actually only got involved with them on Clubhouse because I was helping Tony the closer with a run. Okay. And in a lot of your interviews, you've talked about you know serve your way to success. Mm -hmm. And it's really funny that you say that because as I was doing my research for this interview with you, I was like, wow, that's tr so true. And and I have so many experiences that validate you know your your perspective and your lesson learned kind mm -hmm. of. Um, and so in the room with Tony, I was actually in line for like three hours when Clubhouse was first popping, right? Um, to try to get a question answered. And um, he ended up having to like leave, or I think he wasn't paying attention to the room because you know, there's a thousand people, you know? Yeah. And so at some point I was in line next on queue. And instead of going next, I think I helped facilitate the next few people and told them to come on stage. And, and then someone made me an administrator. He's like, hold on to this while I handle some business real quick. Yeah. And then after that, I got pulled on stage a few more times. I think people just assumed that I was an entrepreneur and I, I had never been an LLC, never sold anything. I think I had $2,000 at the time. And fast forward, I met Corey, I met Justin, um, I met Super, like all Judy with all of them were amazing. And I think I actually even got to be in a room with Grant Cardone, but like I hadn't never in my wildest dreams would have thought like social media could do that. Yeah. And it really, the only reason I got that opportunity is because I saw that there was a chance to, to I mean, sure. I don't have a million dollars. I didn't have any audience to know. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I was working on that. It's a funny because I didn't realize at the time um, that the circle of greatness of which she started. I remember everybody had the rings. Yes. And so because I was always administrating for these bigger rooms, um, eventually um, a Spectacular started a room and he invited me up with all these other people. And I was terrified because it was at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. I'm in my room. My dad, you know, my aunt, my um, my dad was asking me like, what's going on? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just in this room. And I was really nervous because everybody had the rings, obviously, except a few of us. And so then Spent cuts the room out and he's like, I want everybody to go and tell them how you made your first million. And yeah. it was like, <laughs> I was like, I got a million views on a reel. Does that count? So I, literally I was the last one to join the room. Yeah. So everybody's going. And I felt torn between like, do I authentically just admit like, I don't yeah. have a million dollars or, you know, do I try to spin it? And so I ended up saying, you know, I don't have a million dollars yet, but um, I do have a million on reels. And I know I pitched my ebook that I was yeah, working on at the yeah. time. Um, and he was really gracious and didn't kick me out of the room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though he invited the better stuff. Yeah. So he was really kind. So it's it's crazy that you say that because I wouldn't have had the connections to get it to, in, you know, apply for Pinky's thing or any of that if that hadn't happened. So I just really wanted to appreciate like you sharing those lessons because if people are really listening, they will in fact be able to kind of move the needle, right. you know? So I appreciate that. And a few of the questions that I wanted to ask, right, is um, you talk a lot about um, overcoming analysis paralysis. Mm -hmm. Execution is something that you repeat over and over and over again. And for the audience who isn't familiar with you, right, can you tell us a little bit about the fruit truck story yeah, yeah. and how that helped contribute to get you where you are now. Yeah, so the fruit truck story, um, and I don't really talk often about the fruit truck story, um, so it's cool. Um, my very first business school, outside of hustling CDs and, and stuff like that in a school, was a fruit truck. And I got fired from, so bad story, dad in the justice, I was too for committing murder. He died there about five years ago. I got kicked out of high school. I got kicked out of college. I've been fired from 10 jobs. Um, so at the time, after I got fired from that type of job, I said, man, I got to start business. Mm -hmm. And one of my other ways of making money was my grandma would give me money, but I would drive her around, just do whatever that she wanted. But every week I would take her to go get fresh fruit from a fruit truck. Mm -hmm. So as we continued to do it, I would look like, this don't seem like a hard business to start. And it seems profitable. I didn't know what profitable was. You know? <laughs> but I'm like, it seems like I could do this. And my name, I'm the guy who... If I see someone else doing that, I believe I can do it. Mm -hmm. There were these were so many different fruit trucks around. There was one on Forty Acre Market for people in Philly. There was one on mm -hmm. Fifty Second and Gerard, one on Sixty Third and Heifer. I'm like, man, all these places. This must be a thriving type of business. Yeah. Every day I would just take my grandma every week, and I'm like, I could do this. So I asked him, what did I need to do? He said, do this, do this, do that. I'm like, I could do that, and I literally got a fruit truck up and running. And it's so funny, I'll never really get deep in this story, but the fruit truck that I got, man, I really finessed, I think about it. I found an old truck at the auction, which I went and bought for $350. It didn't work. <laughs> I had the fruit truck towed to the place that I was going to sit the truck at and sell the fruit. In addition to the fruit truck not working, which is so crazy, I got to actually start telling. So the truck didn't drive. What, what made you buy a truck that didn't drive? Because I know I needed a box truck so we could put the wood in the back and start selling the fruit out of there. So I didn't need it to drive technically. Dang, oh, that's true. Okay. Yeah, and I couldn't afford it anyway. So okay. I went and bought it probably for under a grand. Moved it to the place that I knew I was going to sell the fruit at. Mm -hmm. The fruit front whole front window was busted out <laughs> on the truck. So I put a tarp on there. So if anybody said, why is it a tarp on there? I'm trying to keep the heat out. The heat out. Wow. I had to put a tarp on there because the front window was busted and I couldn't afford to get the front window fixed. Wow. So then I had to go get an inspection on the truck. Mm -hmm. So I took another truck to, to go get the inspection, not the actual truck. So they passed that truck. Mm -hmm. It was just crazy. That's so insane. You but have to find the <laughs> way. Like people don't. People find excuses. I found every way to make this thing work. Yeah. And I'm so grateful to my mom because at the time, my mom, can you help me? Can you help me? My mom didn't help me do nothing. Mm -hmm. She didn't help me get the license, didn't give me the money for it. And that gave me the, you got to go get this done. Like a lot of us don't get things done because you're waiting for somebody to do it for you. Mm -hmm. You will continue to wait. Like that's why I came in here. I'm like, yo, who's helping you? Nobody. Because if you keep waiting on them, you ain't going to have no darn podcast. <laughs> 
Right. This is how David Shan started. Set it up himself. Yeah. Break it down himself. Do everything good. Because guess what? No one's going to be able to take it from you. One. Two, it's I built this from nothing. Like, when you do bring on these team members, I tell my team, don't get it twisted. Everything that y'all doing, I can go back and do if I right. wanted to. Yeah. I I I can, I can shoot content if I need to. I could I could um I can anything that a lot of people in my company don't I can do. Yeah, because you had to at one point. I got to do sales calls. Yeah, give me a phone. Yeah. So fast forward, I got the fruit truck, and I worked that fruit truck for two years, three years straight. I never made more than fifty dollars profit in a day. I heard that. I heard yeah. you were averaging like thirty five dollars. Yeah, thirty five dollars maybe a day on a good day. Yeah. I, I would make a hundred some days, sixty some days. So, but you got to realize I was waking up at about five this between five and seven going to go get the fruit then he had to go bring it back bag it up and then i will work the truck every day from about 11 o'clock to like 7 p.m every That's single insane. day for 35 dollars profit yeah every day and i did that for years and what a lot of people don't understand is when you have no other i gave myself when i got fired i gave myself no other option mm -hmm. it had to work or it had to work it was this or death for me i take that that serious like it's I became mentally unemployable at that time. So me not thriving, me not making a lot of money, I never acknowledged that. It was like, yo, this is just a part of starting a business. Yeah. So for years, I would do that. I wasn't really making money. But what I learned in these years was I learned grit. I learned work ethic. I learned customer service because I wasn't making enough money. And I, I don't know if you ever heard the term, don't get high off your own supply. Yes. So you I can't couldn't eat the fruit because yeah. I'd be eating a profit. Oh my gosh. So I will get very hopping off the truck. Can I put it in your car? Can I help you? In hopes that I get a tip. Is it true that you were eating rice and gravy? Every day. Rice and gravy. It was like a oh dollar twenty five. You must I don't know where you heard. I don't tell this often. So you did some <laughs> I research. Did some research. <laughs> you did. Because I don't tell this often. So yeah. I might have told this like three, four times. Yeah. But I gotta find where you did that for because we need to clip that up. <laughs> uh but so I will get off the truck, go get the rice and gravy, and then I'll go home and watch, eat with my grandma. Wow. So I lived with my grandma until I was like 24 years old. A lot of people don't know that. Like, it's okay yeah. to stay at home and save your money and try to figure it out. So that's kind of the fruit truck story. That gave me everything I need to just make me go get it. Like, I was about to say, what are some of the foundational lessons? Because yeah. from there, you've built a, an amazing empire, yeah. right? You are a serial We're still entrepreneur, building. right? Yeah, yeah. But it, all, all entrepreneurs are, are never done, right? It's yeah, always never done. day yeah. one, they say Amazon, yeah. right? And so what are some of like the key lessons you felt like the fruit truck oh, man, really gave so you? So many. One is grit. Like One is like, you got to go get it. Two, it got to work or it got to work. Like, you got to find a way to make this business work. I wasn't making a bunch of money. I was making enough. And my mom was like, son, we're making money. We need to start giving back. I wasn't really making no money. That's incredible. But, yeah, so I learned the importance of giving back before I even started making money. Yeah. That's why we've been giving back the last 15 years. Before I ever made money, we were feeding the homeless off the profits that I was making. Mm -hmm. So I learned the importance of giving back earlier on. I learned... The foundation of um, putting in work in. Like, people don't want to work. Like, you want success, but you're unwilling to work. Like, you can't have both. Like, I want to be so successful, but I'm will. It's like looking at Pinky. She's killing it. Yeah. But they don't see how much work that she's putting in. Yeah. They look at me, yo, you're killing it. But you don't see the, the time, the effort that I'm putting in. So that those years helped me develop that. Right. So I could take that same info and put in these digital businesses, these other things that I do. Yeah. So really, I would say develop work ethic for me. Yeah. Which I think is critical. And that's so evident because I think it's very easy for people who don't know you super well to see the Lambos and to yeah. see the trips. And yep. you guys are just at the Super Bowl yep. and there's like a shot with like Meek and, yeah. and Meek Hove. and Hove right yeah. there. Yeah. And it's just, you just on your phone yeah. minding your yeah. business. Uh, that was Meek and Drake. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Meek and Drake. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's really incredible. And I think it's very easy for people who don't know you to assume, oh, this guy must have had a handout yep. or, you know, and, and it wasn't until, you know, I got a chance to like really research you that I yeah. real, you know, that I learned that you have done, you know, over a decade of philanthropy way before you got here yeah i've been doing giving back before they made giving back cool like yeah. this old 15 years ago feeding the homeless and we still do so many things behind the scenes now we're about to come back out in the public and show giving back because i feel like it can inspire other people to do it 100 percent. we can help other people 
that's a goal. Like the goal is one of my buddies said it exposure equals expansion. Like you have to see it in order for you to believe it's possible for you. Yeah. You, you gave quite a few examples in, in the interviews that I saw where you said, you know, you didn't, you know, explicitly have like an entrepreneurial spirit about you, but you saw someone do stuff and you had this innate belief that if I could see it and if they can do it, I can figure it That's out. That's all I ever have to see. One person that specifically black. Yeah. You came from nothing. All right, bet. I got it. Robert Smith, black billionaire. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Got it. Yeah. All I ever need to do is see one person and it, and it drops in my mind. Like, oh yeah, you just got to work yeah. and get connected with the right people. Let me ask you this. Do you think it's possible for um, aspiring entrepreneurs specifically who really do want to have a business, but it's been several years, they've been sitting on it for one reason or another. Do you think it has to take a dire situation for them to get to the, it's, you know, it's, it's going to work or it's going to work? Or can there, is there something like a mindful practice or something that they can do? Because every story of entrepreneur that I've interviewed or I've talked to had this like make or break moment where... Yeah you know, shit hit the fan and mm-hmm. there's just no other option. But yeah. I'm curious to know, cause you, you interact with a lot of entrepreneurs. Is there another way? Is there someone who's listening to this, who's sitting on it, who may not be in like a dire situation? Is there something that can just click if they do this one thing to then be willing to jump in and, and get their business I think done? you gotta keep putting yourself around it. Like you gotta keep putting yourself around entrepreneurs, keep putting yourself around business owners, keep putting yourself in the environments where at some point you're like, man, I can't seem to escape this. I need to finally start this thing. Yeah. Look look at you. You came to that room. That's true. Said, I'm, I don't believe that was a dire need in that room. I don't know if you were at a place, and I don't know this, but at a place where everything is cause collapsing. When you jump in to start a podcast, that doesn't mean you're about to go make millions of dollars. Right. You're, you know, it <laughs> We're takes in the time. red for a, for a while. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying over time, you're going to generate income, a lot of relationships, a lot of things that's going to happen for you that aren't money related that money can't necessarily buy. That's true. Like For me getting on this, I get a podcast request every day and it's, the answer is not right now. Like wow. I got a rule. I don't touch a podcast until you got 50 episodes. Because wow. I need to actually see that you you're, you're not serious. playing games. Oh wow. yeah, I got yeah, Neil. I just started. All right, let me know when you get to fifty. Wow. You know how many people never come back? Wow. Most of them never ever come back. I knew I knew you weren't going to get to fifty. Unfortunately, because people don't got it in them enough to just stick with that thing that they start. Yeah. So it's just, I believe a dire need isn't necessary, but those dire needs are normally the people who go do enormous things because you give yourself no other option. Like yeah. Burn the boats. Burn the boats. Like I think uh, Les Brown says, if you fall on your back, if you could look up, you, you can, can get, get up. up. You know what I'm saying? So Brown. it's like, I like those things when, when, like, I think about my story and I'm like, man, dad been to Justin's house too, kicked out of high school, college, fired from 10 jobs. And I'm like, man, all of those things when they were happening, it was the worst feelings of my life. I bet. Now I enjoy telling you those things so much because those are what made me. And your story will eventually pay you. I think about David Goggins. We paid this dude like 160 grand to speak for an hour. I love David Goggins. Right. Have you and read his recent book, his second one? No, I got to get it's it. It's incredible. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Did you you listen to the audio? Yeah. He's actually doing the audio? He's doing time? he's doing the audio, and he yeah. does like bonus podcast episodes at the end of every chapter okay. that's not in the written okay. book. So listen to it if you oh, can. Got, it's awesome. Because his last audio, someone else read the audio. Really? On his first one. No, the first one he he did it himself too. No, no, no. I'm not what I listen to. Oh, okay. He had somebody else read the audio, and then at the end of the chapter, it, he. Would oh, yeah. Sorry, because he the basically same... said, "I couldn't. I can't sit still." I apologize. Yeah, it's the same format for his second one. He has that guy okay. reading the, yeah. the, the chapter, and then at the end, he's yeah. there. Yeah, which he brings is good. his mom on, which is really incredible. Okay. Good. So good. yeah, but yeah, finish what you were saying. You yeah. were saying you brought him on. But um, he sat there for an hour. It wasn't no business strategy. It was, he told his story. Mm-hmm. So when he was going through those things, those were nightmares. Watching yeah. him, his mom get beat and all of it. Those things were horrible, I'm, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But now that thing is paying at me handsomely. Yeah. So again, some people, you're going through things to prepare you for where God is about to take you. Absolutely. When did you feel like you arrived in your business? Because well (laughs) so 
can you answer this for me then? Yeah. Do you feel the same? It's got to work or it's got to work at the same level of when you were in your 20s with the food truck, buying the broken truck with no yep. windshield as you do now? I feel pretty much the same because new levels, you always want to just keep getting better. Like, what's next for me? Like, I'm in the light right now. I was talking with my friend. Yo, what's next? The landscape of entrepreneurship is changing. People are holding on to their money tighter. And like, what's next? Like, yeah. we got to keep elevating and making things work so when you conquer a new level you got to go to the next one you got to go to the next one you're like this game we getting this is a constant elevation this is yeah. not working like a job every day every day it's the same thing for you yeah do that job you're gonna get no this is a grind you gotta figure this thing out yeah <laughs> i was talking to my homie matt earlier before i got here <laughs> he said bro you got to become a scientist now with this marketing yeah it ain't the same you just no. throw up a post think it's up yeah. You got to become a scientist right now. It's it's the one degree of separation between you and your competition. And you can't ever get comfortable because that's when you get obsolete. Yeah. Um, so, so let me ask you this. Has your, now that you are a father, right? You are a husband at this point. Has that impacted at all your grind? If it feels the same as it did back then? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people say that. Like, yo, you have a kid, you grind. I'll, I've been grinding since, so I don't grind more now. I mean, I grind crazy, but it's not like, oh, yo, you had a kid, you going to go hard. I was already going hard as I could go. Mm. I was going hammer time prior to my kids. And for me, you know, now I recommend entrepreneurs really focus on one or two businesses. I focus on two, three things, fruit truck, junk removal. You said that. you <laughs> T-shirt company, all that selling crabs. I didn't hear about that one. Yeah, I was, you used sold to crabs, sell crabs on the side of on the side of the fruit truck. <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> at the same time, yeah. I love that. And then and then I eventually, because I was doing junk removal, I I never even talked about. It. I got something called uh, who we used to call this business. It was like deals on wheels. Okay. So when we would now go do junk removal jobs, all the good furniture we would go take to deals on wheels and sell it secondhand furniture. That's crazy. I forgot about that. I gotta start. It. On that. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, so we would do that. But I was just doing all these. Things. I had to figure out how to make this thing work because I I became mentally unemployable. When, wow. When that happened, you got to make this thing work. What are the entrepreneurs who you see, whether they're new or established? What are the common denominators when it comes to their success? Would you say? Yeah. Um, go get a spirit. Um, Explain that to me. What do you mean? Like they just got to figure out how to make this thing work. Go get it. Like, I got it. You said the comment that, like, like, like what attributes do they have? Yeah. Like a go get it spirit, um, a risk taker. Cause nobody knew of any of these things. Pinky didn't know the Cess was going to, she probably didn't know it was going to work, but who knew this is going to, it's going to get picked up by Netflix or somebody some big point, like yeah. that mm -hmm. prior to her. But she went and betting on her. Mm -hmm. Let me go find I know that production wasn't cheap. No, not at all. She went was... and funded that out of her pocket. And it was custom. Everything was. Oh, yeah. It was, it yeah. was a real show. Like, mm -hmm. she wasn't playing around, right? No. But she went and put her money where her mouth was and didn't know if th whether this was going to survive, thrive, fail, or anything. But she did that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I think that is just a powerful. It's powerful when you do that. So, I think go get betting on yourself. And, um. It's another attribute of successful entrepreneurs. Always learning. Mm. I think you got to put in your mind. Like, you got to keep learning. Yeah. Like, people, man, they don't, they don't, I'm addicted to learning right now. Like, I wasn't. I hated school. But now, like, I become addicted to trying to be the best I can be. Like, I'm trying to learn something new every day. What's the last, like, mind-blowing um, concept or nugget or gem that you've gotten recently? And do you mind sharing with us? Last mind-blowing gem. I want to say my insurance guy told me you should be focusing on three things right now. It's life insurance, mm -hmm. buying businesses, and real estate. I'm doing all three of them, but that those are my three focuses. Creating indestructible wealth through cash value life insurance, buying businesses. So it takes the same amount of energy for me to build the business. As it does to just find the capital to buy it. To buy the business. That's incredible. And then real estate, like gosh, my f f mentors and friends, shout out Doug, that been teaching me about getting in real estate. But now I'm really trying to 
focus on leaving my family something where, yo, in our trust and our will, you can't sell this property. Keep this thing forever. That's amazing. So y'all can get this money every single month for the yeah. rest of your life. That's awesome. Yeah. Something that happened to me, it would hurt my feelings if my wife got to go back to work. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, my mom, you got to go back to work. All I, the hours you've put in, the years you've put in at this point. I'll be hurt. Yeah. <laughs> every bit of me, my soul. So, yeah, I just want to put things in position. A lot of entrepreneurs, who, when they're just getting started, um, a common barrier that they express is, oh, I don't have the capital. I don't have money. I don't have this. I don't, you know, money seems to be a big issue. Yeah, and absolutely. there's lots of creators now who are on social media talking about um, business funding and things like that. You know, what do you have to say to entrepreneurs who really do feel like I would love to, I have the work ethic, but I just don't have the resources. What would you say? Well, to if them? you had a work ethic, find somebody that has the money and partner with them. Mm. You be the sweat equity partner. They be the financial partner. As long as you had that in you and you go run the play. I mean, it's very, it's so like you have to like get, you got to get resourceful in these times right now. You got to get gritty. You got to, yeah, you got to figure this thing. Go borrow the money. Yo, your grandma got a 401k <laughs> they may not be using. No. Right. Your mom may got a 401k they not use. Look at you. You here by yourself. Flew in here from Texas. Listen. Rented a spot. <laughs> set everything up. That's getting gritty. Yeah. That's going to go do the work. Yeah. yeah and I think that's one of the, that's powerful. I think, I think a lot of entrepreneurs and I'll talk about myself. I've used to see entrepreneurs who have achieved as much as you have and think, you know, and this is in the past before I really did the work on myself to realize mm -hmm. that there's no such thing as luck. Right. Mm -hmm. Oprah says it's just um, hard work uh, meeting opportunity. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. um, can you share a story about a time where you failed? So crazy. When you talk about failure, I look at failure like testing, honestly, like but a story when I my mind is just so different. Like I don't look felt people look at failure like like it's a bad thing. I look at it as like, man, what can I learn from it? How can mm. I get better the very next time? So I never even compartment a lot compartment uh, compartmentalized. There you go. Whatever you just said. <laughs> And in my head, I got to literally go dig deep on the failure because I fell so much, mm -hmm. but I don't acknowledge it. It's just like, oh, don't do that again, Neil. Yeah. That that thing didn't work. Um, but I would say a failure to me is just missing out on opportunities, like saying I'll go next time and it may not be a next time. Like it's yeah. been things that has been presented to me that I said, no, nah, I'm good. And I'll give you an example. Somebody a podcast started his podcast popping podcast he wanted twenty thousand to advertise for the year all the episodes and all everything social media everything one of my buddies gave him the 20 grand came back like two months later i was busy hey y'all want to do the podcast oh yeah you got to talk to my manager now talk to his manager two hundred and forty thousand. so i'm like it wasn't a fail i didn't truly fail but i missed out on the opportunity because mm. i waited so I look at those things like, yo, success loves speed. You got to move on opportunities. I love that. Success loves speed. Yeah, absolutely. It does. Wow. Everything I do, you got to move with a sense of speed and urgency. The best time to do something is now. Now, no opportunity Yesterday, wasted. but today's yeah. the next best opportunity. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah, I don't, it's funny. I don't got a lot of failing stories. I'm sure I could, but I don't, because I don't acknowledge them as failing. It's just a part of doing business. Yeah. And, and I think, I think. Um, business and success tends to, you, you call it luck if you want, tends to follow those who are willing to try and fail repeatedly. Um, and it's just, it, it's interesting that it works out that way and that the people who are quick to try over and over again um, are the ones who end up having the success. You talk about like David Shans, who um, has been a great um, inspiration for me. Um, and to see some of his early episodes start off very similar to where I'm starting um, gives me a lot of hope. I literally thought, as I seen him, like, yeah, when I said earlier, you, David used to set up. I don't know if he had the white back wall in his other studio, mm -hmm. and that's what he was doing. Yeah. It's fun. You been to his new studio? Uh, yes, I have. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. The new one, right, with all the rooms in yeah, it? Yeah. Okay, it's cool. It's really, really I was going to tell you, you should go by there. Yeah. yeah okay. I, I stopped by there earlier, but he wasn't there. Okay. Um, but we'll yeah. be there later. 
Oh, really? Yeah, we got an event tonight. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. I definitely have to catch up with you about that okay. off, off the, because y'all can't come. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> next um, time. Next time. But I just wanted to say thank you mm-hmm. so much for, for offering your time and for Absolutely. coming. Is there Absolutely. any last words that you'd want to part on to an entrepreneur who's literally sitting on an idea who's like, you know, man, I'm super inspired by this conversation, but like, like just some kind of words for them to kind of get up and, yeah, and do I mean, it. Do it. You know what I mean? Like you said it, just do it. Like you need to really, what I do that has helped me, has been helpful, I give myself penalties. So for example, we we're at the sesh. After now I'm like, hey, I'm gonna do my podcast on this date on the 30th, right? Mm-hmm. 30 days from now, okay. What's the penalty if you do not do it? Mm. One of the penalties, of course, you're gonna stay in the same place that you already are. That's a penalty. Because I don't care where you're at in life, you should always be looking to be better. Yeah. If you're in the same spot you're in next year now, if you're in the same spot that you're in, if you're in the same position you're in right now next year, that's a problem. Yeah. You didn't do anything to grow. Yeah. Right? So I just think you got to start. And again, I give myself penalties. So I would say, all right, you got 30 days to get it done. But what's the penalty if you don't? Mm. You got to give yourself something that is so severe that it's going to force you into action. So, What kind of penalty have you given yourself? My penalties might be like, I got to go flush $30,000 down the toilet. Dang. It got to be something that you really don't want to do. Yeah. Like, just say for somebody else, theirs might be 5000 You live in Chicago. You got to put your car up for the winter and catch the bus to work. Yikes. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I yeah, it gotta be that. You gotta feel it. One of my guys, I'm like my penalty, I gotta give my ex wife ten thousand dollars. He said, They ain't gonna happen. I like Boy. I hate her, he said. <laughs> I said, Okay, good. I need you to feel it. You see how you felt that catch the yeah. bus in Chicago in the winter when Absolutely you don't? Not. Absolutely not. <laughs> Take your kids to school on You're a bus. Be up all night to getting it done. Getting it done. Because so imagine not. when you start giving yourself a penalty on everything when you don't, and you start sharing it with people. Like, yo, if I don't get this done, I owe you ten thousand dollars. Wow. Now your homie on your line. F nine. You told me <laughs> it's day 29, 38 <laughs> seconds. Yep. Just you want got to let forty you know. more seconds. Our email set. Yeah. Because you need wow. you need something to push you like that. And you got to really start exposing yourself to people who don't it. It's so easy to stay in your box yeah. and stay in a comfort. I don't want to be comfortable. You need to be pushing yourself. I want to go in rooms where I feel uncomfortable, where yeah. I feel like I don't belong. Yeah, I heard like, you say in an episode that like if you're you go to spaces where you feel like... You're the smartest? You know, I'm leaving. Yeah, exactly. I'm out. You almost feel like you're not smart enough to be in that room or you're not oh, experienced I, enough to be in that I, room. That's the rooms I want to be in. Where I'm going in there, like, I really don't belong. I does feel Does imposter syndrome, like, not affect you in those spaces? What, what, what does that mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> tell, no, I'm saying, what? tell me what that, I heard that, but give me. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> I thought you are like, that I, really I know, doesn't I, register. I believe I know what I mean, but I'll just make sure yeah, I understand. Yeah, sorry, I apologize. No, so, good. imposter syndrome is where you self-doubt your own abilities yeah. to a crippling point, right? Oh, yeah. Sometimes, like, manufacturing fears and things I go that are in not room, even... In some of the rooms, yes. I'm like, yeah, I go in the rooms like, yo, I, I, I felt how you felt on the clubhouse when they come to you. Hey, what are you doing your business? Mm-hmm. I'm like, <laughs> he said your first million i said yeah. i'm trying to get to the first hundred bro yeah. <laughs> i do not like i was in a room with grant and he asked his buddy hey hey like yo, what, what did you do last year four or five million he said i remember when i, I remember he he said something like uh i remember when it was like when i was broke too i'm like yo i'm like what so it was just crazy it got hotter in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but I said I had to say is like that room we were in, like everybody in that room in the last year grossed like one billion or something. It was like insane. hundred and something people. So I say all that to say, um, it's just crazy when you get in the right environments. Like, but I want to be in those rooms because it make you got to level up, you got to push harder, you got to go stronger, you got to work harder on yourself. So that's why I tell people, you got to start getting around some big thinkers, around some people doing it. That's not your mom. It's not your wife. It's not your husband. It's not your spouse. It's not your kids. You got Because they want to see you safe. Yeah. Somebody probably said, well, you going to sure you going to travel by yourself? Mm. 
it's not safe to Let go there by you, yourself. So many people are like, you've never done this before. You're spending all of this money. I also mm-hmm. have a nine to five, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're right. And, and it's, you gotta be mindful about the people you keep around you because they will influence your thinking and they'll, <laughs> If you let them, they'll also convince you that what you're doing is not only just dangerous, but it's reckless, it's negligent, all these other things. And there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. You're betting on yourself. Yeah. You're, you're doing what needs to be done. Yeah. But your homegirls, they love you. They care for you. Your husband. Your they spirit. want me to be comfortable and safe. Yeah, like, and- uh, no, but why? Baby, you could just stay here. Just and stay home. Just do it from Zoom. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm not actually building a relationship with this individual right. that I, that I want to build. Yeah. So it's just so many... And they're not doing it because they don't want to see you win. It's just that they're at a place of comfort. Yeah. So I try to get in environments and rooms where it's just not, I don't want to be comfortable. Yikes. At all. Yeah. Being comfortable is not it. Yeah. It's the beginning of the downfall, really, the minute you get comfortable. Yeah. I'm not being comfortable ever. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, I know that you're pressed for time, so thank oh, you so good. much yep. for coming by. Thank we you. We really, really appreciate having you. Yep. I will definitely make sure that we share this episode. Um, is there anywhere that you want to drop, like any events that you have coming up yep. or websites that you want to promote? Yeah, you can just follow me on Instagram uh, at Neo DeViso. Uh, work with me, mastermind with Neo, N E O dot com. And just check out our YouTube free. 100 plus videos, free content, mm-hmm. podcast, Circle of Greatness, 100 plus episodes of just free game to help you guys get to the next level. So I'm grateful to be on your podcast Thank and you. looking forward to seeing it just continue to skyrocket. So I appreciate it. Thank you it. so much. Thank you.